Welcome to the Spot Real Talk. My name is Tiara. I'm Lawanda. I'm Tiffany. And I'm Ron. And today we are back to discuss another episode of The Shy. Uh, this is episode nine of season three. So if you hang tight, we'll be right back with you. Bring your tissue with you. <laughs> really? <laughs> Show you how I'm nothing like him. Swear that's the truth. You can't trust that I'm... All right, so we are back. And like I said, we're discussing season three of The Shy. This is episode nine, so things are really winding down. Um, this episode was titled Lacking. Um, uh, this episode tore me apart. <laughs> okay, well, listen, that title lacking me is the same in any culture <laughs> yes <laughs> got caught lacking. and ronnie got caught lacking he got and caught lacking. I, wow. I, couldn't you feel it couldn't you feel it couldn't you feel like they were saying goodbye it did like he was it closing up be. all his loose ends and everything yeah and when, yes. he, when he gave that five thousand dollar check to um you to, know, uh, yeah. the baby girl the baby girl the baby girl's mom i mean i was like okay that's when i knew something was going on i was like something's up this I is listen my head was legacy i heard legacy that's yeah. yeah yeah that's true yeah well you know i was gonna say i had to say to lawanda because she called it a couple of episodes ago she she had a feeling she was like it seems like they're setting him up to be a tragic hero. And, you know, I'm a sports fan, so I have to say we got to give the game ball to LaWanda this, <laughs> this week because she yes. called it. It's your fault, LaWanda. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were talking about. And sometimes, you know, when you think about the tragic hero, there's no redemption without death, right? Because right. while he was still living, there were some people who still had some sore feelings about him, but, like, once he's dead, then they'll start to remember the good things about him, and right. then they'll look at the totality of his life. And so that's kept what I was thinking. I was like, if he truly wants to be redeemed, you took a life, you're going to have to give a life. No, that's true. And if there wasn't enough to save one, you were going to have to give it. Yeah. Aaron said that, too, when we had him on episode three. And also, because, you know, this is apropos for LaWanda to come up with that because LaWanda is also a screenwriter mm -hmm. and a, a wonderful writer herself. So she saw that art coming. I saw it coming. And then when, I don't want to skip ahead, but you know, there's always when someone leaves, someone comes. So it was like, you could see yeah. how they're setting all of this up. Yeah. It's, it's like uh, for something to live, something must die. And, and you know, there, there's so many um, symbolic, uh, you know, scenarios that you can pull from from the death of Ronnie and I, I just started you know looking and 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 kind of I'm saying well I guess you know to memorialize him will keep him alive forever in the sense of his heroic you know his heroic his heroic acts and I, you know I just didn't think it would be as gruesome yeah as he really got like almost point blank range in the back of the head like that was yeah. oh i was hurt i was hurt yeah yeah i felt bad but you know what though you know even like he, he got redemption um god forgave him and everything but you know that even with forgiveness you're not immune from the repercussions mm -hmm. and no. so while he was forgiven he still you know no it's it's funny it's like you know not funny but it, it's like okay he got saved it's like the irony of the situation. And it's, it's like, you know, this was a way to make certain that, you know, he's in the bosom of God. Uh, you know, so before his death, he got clean. That's that's yeah. what I can look at, it, you know. Yeah, yeah, it hurts. It's always this thing that, you know, oh gosh, I see it so many times and it's like, it's what we typically think of, but sometimes I want to say, can you escape that? Right? What's good enough that, okay, of course we all have to deal with karma. It's ca cause and effect, but at some point, your good should outweigh your bad almost not, regardless of what it is, right? That if a person makes a change, why can't they live that change out? You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Right. So that's the sad part about it because you can see that he had been through so much and he was working through so much and he yes. was working so hard to change and to. Um, make his life mean something, but I was mm -hmm. thinking about 
in the last episode when he was talking to Keisha, they were sitting at the table and she was talking about, it's like, I was almost out of here. And they, they had this conversation almost like the shy just won't let you leave it like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and that's why I think why the death hit harder because it's like we've seen his progress, we've seen his whole journey. And for it to happen, like it could have happened at any point before this, and we would have been like, okay, karma, what goes around comes around. But the fact that it, he had really tried to redeem himself mm -hmm. makes it all the more worse. Oh, I just couldn't take it. I no, was so it, it's heartbreaking. <laughs> it's heartbreaking. And I, you know, I wish he had left sooner because he was getting ready to leave. But old yeah. girl convinced him, and I and I I talked to Luanda. I told Luanda, I'm beefing with old girl because yeah. I told y'all a couple episodes that that chick, she is the reason why he killed Coogie in the first place. She put the battery in his back, and then when he did it, she was like, "Oh, I didn't tell you to do that." And then while he was struggling all this time and homeless. Where was she? I, I know she has her group, so I, you know, she is she is doing well with her group, and she did help Keisha's family. But then she came back around to Ronnie. Now that Ronnie had blowed up, so yes. I, I have issues with Tracy. That's yeah. why the grandmother didn't like her, cause <laughs> 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 That's why the grandmother didn't like her, cause you're right. If it wasn't for her, he would have disposed of the grandmother's ashes and he would have been gone. He probably would have left. But it was the fact that he, he stuck around and gave the guy the opportunity. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, you know. And it's like I said, she showed up now that he is getting all his, he was getting all his flowers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, but she didn't have nothing to do with him when he was homeless and stuff. Where was she? But isn't that so typical, though? I mean, that is so... I mean, the reality of that whole scene is just crazy. I mean, really, it took me to, like, a boys in the hood type thing where, like, he had just gotten his life together, was getting ready to move out the hood, and then, boom, it's all over. So I was just like, I can't take it right now. But, you know, and, um, you, die by, you know, you live by the sword, you die by the sword, and, you know, you commit... You, when you commit murder, you can almost expect it coming back to you, in, you know, mm -hmm. in that regard, so... I mean, I, I think the writing was just really superb uh, for episode. It was, yeah. Uh, and even even as much as I wanted to grab Kevin and smack him a few times, <laughs> Kevin, to the reality of what his sister's going through, mm -hmm. I had to respect the writing, even coming from his perspective. Mm -hmm. I had to respect that as well. So I think the show showed a superb sense of uh, coming together with writing and acting. Um, mm -hmm. I think you said, Luanda, that this was your favorite uh, episode, and yeah. I thought a few episodes ago would, uh, would be mine, but I may have to agree with you. This was probably one of the best uh, episodes uh, in its entirety. I, I don't know of anyone that was so, so right on in terms of uh, the writing and the acting. Yeah, it was interesting. I was just... You said, yeah, it was sad. I didn't want that for Ronnie. No, yeah. not my name thing. I certainly didn't want it, you know. <laughs> and I, I was saying to you offline that there was some eeriness about uh, what, you know, he was going through. And, you know, even with, the, you know, the urn and releasing. And that was another symbolic sense, uh, releasing his, um, his um, you know, grandmother. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, letting the ashes out into the, uh, you know, flow of that water. Uh, that was a freedom thing. That was a, that was freeing her up, freeing her up in his mind. You know, allowing him to move forward. But at the same token, it's like he had no idea that he would be meeting her soon. You know, right. it, it's just crazy, crazy. Yeah, I, I'm scared to get attached to any more characters now because man, the shy is a rough place. Yeah, it's a rough place to live. I'm telling you, and mind wise or physically, it's a it's a rough place to live. Yeah, but you, you brought up Keisha, too, and um, Kevin, and so we see them a lot um, together this episode, um, as Keisha is still struggling with her, you know, uh, recovering from being kidnapped, and um, she keeps having, like, these flashbacks, and certain things will, like, trigger her, um, and it's, it's really sad, and the fact that she's still not um, really communicating those feelings to her family, I think is really going to hurt her um, in the long run. But this episode, they also dropped the big bomb on us when she took the pre pregnancy test. Yes. Ooh, that's heavy. Yeah, that is heavy. Yeah, I. That I, is heavy. I was like, wow. Ooh. And then it seems like she had, you know, maybe a second thought. Does she want to keep the child? 
you know. I mean, it is part of her. It is part of her. Mm -hmm. It is, mm -hmm. but when you have a child that's born out of such a terrible situation, that's really a constant reminder because you'll see the, the kidnapper in your child, too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and right. then she's, she talked about still wanting to train. So it's like she wants to move forward. And I did appreciate that moment between she and Kevin when Kevin sat there and he held her and everything. Yeah. I was like, okay. And also, too, when you mentioned, um, I think, Tiffany, about the triggers, you know, I'm glad that she's facing those fears, though. That, that shows that, uh, you know, that she's a very strong person. I mean, to get out there and run, and, and even though, you know, she, she had to hesitate and she started having panic attack when she saw at the bus route, but she was there. She's facing her fear. So mm -hmm. I think that that's a healing uh, process all within itself facing her th those uh, fears that uh, mm -hmm. you know, she's obviously going to have from moment to mm -hmm. moment. Yeah, and it definitely looks like Nina and Dre are on um, a, a better path this episode mm -hmm. because it was looking rocky for them last week. Yeah. But um, it, it looks like they've been to a, um, at least a family therapy um, and they've gone out on this hike. Um, it looks like it was in a, some kind of support group um, hike, but then they kind of branch off on their own and they discuss their burdens and kind of letting those things go. And it was a very like tender like moment at the end where they kind of like release their burdens and then they kind of smile at each other and talk about uh, how Dre likes to help broken women fix them. <laughs> so I'm glad to see them back on on track. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and even though Keisha has a long way to go with recovery. You see that she's trying with meditation and stuff too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. the uh, meditation app that she has. Mm -hmm. I know she's a very strong woman. Right? That's that's the uh, appearance they're giving us. And so I, I don't think you know. I think she'll be good. I, I think mm -hmm. getting back into track, you know, uh, running, you know, facing her fears. I think she'll she'll do well. I think the biggest hurdle now is that child. I, for some reason, I think she's going to plan on having. It. Yeah, I. I'm I'm a little I'm I'm I want her to you know really consider all that comes with it because like you can think about it and you don't really want to get rid of a child the child has no no um wrong in the situation it's not their fault that it, it this happened but um at the same time it's like that really could lead her to a real dark place um mm -hmm. having the kid is a huge responsibility and then like with her not being able to go to college off of her scholarship, like her whole um, life has kind of been railroaded. But you never know who that child might become. And yeah, you know, that's true. That's I true. Think that is a haunt. I don't know if you want to live with, you know, because for a child to be born out of such, um, you know, out of such terror and anger, you know, who knows? I mean, what that child can bring back, it could be tenfold, and and that child may be a lifesaver for mankind. You don't know, you know. Yeah. You don't but that, know. That's what I was saying that, you know, you see running, you see a life leaving, but then you also see a life coming. It's that circle, yeah. that circle right. of life. And so that's yeah. what got me. I thought that was very symbolic. Mm -hmm. um, and well done, too. I, yeah. That was well played out. And I think it is extremely symbolic. But you also, whatever decision she makes, you're going to see her, it's like, I'm glad to see her taking control of her healing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Going out and running. And then I, don't, I think I was surprised that she told her parents as quickly as she did that she didn't hold that as soon as she knew for sure that she shared that with them which I thought was a step in, a, in the right direction. Right. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I was like, okay, the, the therapy <laughs> must be working. Yeah. It has to be because, you know, that, that's a hard thing to do when, when the circumstances are completely different. And right. for her to come running out like that and wanting to share that with, you know, her, her mom, uh, that says a lot about her. Yeah. Well, maybe when she had, you know, when she burned all of her stuff, that was a new beginning. Maybe that and her mom was with her when she did that. So maybe she felt comfortable enough, like, okay, my mom is here in my corner and this, she's gonna be my rock, both, both she and Dre. So yeah. maybe that's what helped I, her. That, that was certainly a cleansing moment. And I, I think that that really helped her more than anything else. Yeah. Now somebody else that needs to go through their cleansing moment and get some stuff off their chest is Emmett. <laughs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> boy. <laughs> Look, he needs to come clean. 
get the hands this week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All far from the tree at yeah. all. Right. <laughs> tell you, that is, I, you know, I felt, right you know, yeah. funny, I felt embarrassed for Emmett. You know, I mean, just to think, you know, <laughs> I mean, I know this isn't real, but there was such realism in that. I, I felt embarrassed for uh, Emma. So I, mean, I don't understand how he can walk around with that dangling over his head. And Tiffany, I think you mentioned last week how Dom, she tries to play cool, like, oh, I'm not that kind of girl, but she is definitely going to have that over his head. Oh, she <laughs> has feelings. She, she, she was quite uncomfortable yeah, when we, she saw him propose. And listen, my namesake, Tiff, I bet you she already knows. She probably already has an inkling of what's going on. Oh, you said, sure. seen how she looked at them when, when she was talking about making this. Uh, maybe I can give you a little inspiration. And Tiffany well, looked over at old girl like See, this. This is why I said my namesake, unlike me, unlike this Tiff, because <laughs> Tiff would have said something immediately. That's true that. True I'm that. Asking, like, what kind of inspiration you talking about? Like, yeah, I, believe, I believe you would have said something when you saw your boy Emmett up under the table and his eyes. That's what different. I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. I would have I would have said something immediately. She would have got more than a side glance. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that that's what Tip and I was we were having this conversation offline. And we were like, what is it with men that why you want to have your Real chick and your side chick in the same room. What what is that about? That's that, well. That's let me tell you what that's about. Well. Let me tell you what that's about. Well. Oh, 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 you enlighten us, Ron. Yeah, gonna... <laughs> tell us, Ron. Teach us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how they say, uh, keep your uh, friends cl your close and your enemies closer. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, I see. You see, you want you want that to be as close. Now, what you hope. But yeah. that's too, like, he's trying to make sure they don't get a moment you know, alone. You want to exactly. get with women. No, look, that I'm not true. saying, I'm well, not saying it's not crazy. It is totally crazy. But uh, that way you feel as though, you, well, you feel as though you control them both. Because, you know, you kind of, you think you understand the nature of a woman. But see, what I need to train these, these brothers out here is you will never understand the nature of a woman. So, you, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you know what? I'll say it and I'll say it a thousand times. You all's ability, your your instinctiveness is far sharper than we'll ever know. And so when you when you understand that as a man, then you can, you know, you, you can you can breathe, you can live comfortably, knowing mm -hmm. that I look. I, and, and it's it, funny that you say that too, because you see how his mom went up to him like I can tell you lying. Like that woman's intuition is something. Mom knew what time it was. That's why when she walked up and said, come and help me put the lights up, she was breaking that mess up. Mess up. Mm -hmm. She said, let me get him outside so I can have a conversation. I, I would have done the same thing. Right. And yeah. when she said, when, yeah. when, 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 when Jada said, what were you all arguing about? She knew they mm -hmm. weren't arguing. She was just like hoping that Emmett would come. That he would come clean. Mm -hmm. come clean. That, look, she knows that that is, that Emmett is just like his father. Yep. And so she, she knows how Emmett is. She was just trying to give him a chance to come clean. Yeah. And Emmett did what Emmett does. He lied first. <laughs> you know. And 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 we know that Tiff is gonna find out. <laughs> For sure. I'm with Ron. It was like, okay, like you saying the men they don't really get women. We got her. Cause when she said I'm not like those other girls, that meant danger to me. I didn't get yes. I, I, I thought her. so too. I thought that meant that I'm going to turn this up. You are going to regret ever messing with me like that. And and what I didn't understand is just because she's saying that she's cool and she's not catching feelings, you going to propose in front of her on the yeah. day you open up a business? <laughs> you got to have, yeah, you know, you know that, look, that when they tell you I'm not catching feelings, reverse it. They got feelings. Right. Just All right. Automatically reverse that because I'm gonna tell you crazy said all she wants. No the other crazy part about it was like, why did you feel the need to propose after you already messed up like colossal? Like this is a huge like fumble. You you really messed this up for yourself, and now you feel the need to propose after that, like after such a huge screw up like this. So <laughs> different people don't really feel taken advantage of. A lot of dudes do that. Do that. No, they do. They do. Yeah, they if she you. finds out. She's gonna feel like, oh, you you're really trying to play puppet master here. Like you're trying to control the situation. That, well, actually, that was very manipulative. Actually, what the thought process behind that is, 
I'm gonna go ahead and propose because maybe that's gonna help me deal with this demon I got in me that I have to have every woman I see. That's a way of thinking, but that is by far not the truth. You gotta yeah. deal with that thing openly because he's got a problem. And unless he deals with it, he'll always be that way. And yeah. I'm gonna tell you, Dom, 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 Dom isn't through with him. She's no, not yeah. through with him in, in any fashion. At all. And I guarantee you those psychics words are still ringing in Tiffany's ears. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's well, you, you heard mom. You heard mom. Mom was like, you know, should have a long engagement. <laughs> she's giving her a hint right there. I know. Because she let her know he ain't ready. Yeah. And I'm sure she picked up on the hint. I'm sure she picked up on it. Yeah, but, uh, but, the father came up in there trash talking the ring, oh, talking all kinds of stuff about that. Their Listen, whole I told LaWanda, like he probably he been married a couple of times. He knows because he probably did that. He probably got the ring from the pawn shop. No, he <laughs> and he's still currently married. I believe he's yeah. married. Yeah. And he's all up in Dom's face. I was so like, I'm like this is man is off the hook. Oh. Well, we see why Emmett is that way. Yeah. But um, something else I noticed in this episode too was that they um had a cameo by G Herbo, and he's like a um, yes. Chicago native. Yeah. He's a rapper from Chicago, yeah. and I thought it was very fitting to put him in this episode because he talks a lot about growing up in Chicago and how many like over 20, 30 friends that he's lost to gun violence and how he has PTSD from that. And so he's on like this um kind of campaign to help black men in, in the community to deal with their um mental health. And I was like, how That's fitting dope. because we get the situation with Ronnie and I talked about how attached we get to the characters and especially when they're on the road to redemption. So think of how much more so that would hurt if you're living that reality. Yes. Right. So I'm like, yeah, that was very fitting for them to drop him in this episode, um, considering what he's doing in real life. Yeah. It, I, I'm hat, hats off and much applause to uh, the writing and the um, and directing in this uh, in this, you know, because it just the shy is just getting better and better and better, you know. Yes, mm -hmm. they do a really good job of humanizing the characters to show yeah. that when you have this, like, you we can be desensitized. We hear these stories of these shootings, but you don't get to connect that to an actual person. Here, you get to see that when there is a loss, there is a vacancy. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a loss. Mm -hmm. People miss them. These these are these people are someone loves them. This is someone mm -hmm. has, their daughter, their son. Um, father, um, and it doesn't go away for them. And we get to see um, the ramifications of all of this loss, this just death. Yeah. Since yeah. since needs this death. As cold as I used to think Chicago was, and I don't mean by temperature, I'm talking about the ruggedness and the death of, of Chicago. You know, what this show allows is, it, it allows me to see the love and the feeling that, that, that really permeates throughout um, um, you know, rural areas or, or rather urban areas like Chicago. So I've learned a lot and I can say learn because I think there's a lot of realism in the show. So, mm -hmm. you know, and so I've, I've grown a lot about Chicago. You know, I can see the love in it. I can see why, you know, it has that effect. You know, it, it can lull you to never leave. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I, I really did. My hat's off for this episode. Um, the last thing that we have to bring up about this episode in particular was uh, Otis and his whole situation. Um, Otis, so it's it's from Otis and Rosalind. They are attending um, Papa's dad's, you know, church function. And we find out that he has now switched his endorsement from Camille to Otis. Um, <laughs> Listen, and, Papa is going to lose his religion behind his dad. <laughs> Because his dad is a mess. Yeah, he is. He is. He is. He is. But, you know, hey, I, I don't even want to go there right now. That's a whole nother show we can do. I know, but that he switched his um, allegiance to Camille, and it sounds like he's been dipping in the honey pot with somebody else, too. With, uh, uh, what's it called? Secretary or whoever Angela? that was? Angela? Yeah. Angela. Whoever yeah. Angela is is whoever. oldest people. Yeah. And yeah, he's dipping in the honey pot over there, it sounds like. Yeah, he's a trip. Papa is going to be so disappointed. He's going to be yeah. so... when he. That's what I said. Papa is going to lose his faith. When you find out your father is a, a false prophet, he's going to lose yes. his faith. Yes. Hey, hey, you know that. 
You know that. I, and particularly because Papa bought in. You know, he's he's all the way in Christian. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. It's really going to hit him hard if he finds any of that. You know, well, he's already seen one part of it that didn't set well with him. Now, if he mm -hmm. you know, understands that something's going on, mm, I don't know how that's going to work with uh, Papa. Yeah. Look, in honor of Papa, Papa had on the God is Dope sweatshirt. Yeah. I got that same one he has. I'm wearing my God is Dope shirt tonight, too. And mm -hmm. that's, that's a shout out to... Uh, God is dope because it's a black owned business mm -hmm. out of Atlanta. So yeah, like support the black owned businesses on here too. Mm -hmm. My tea on Edgewood. So shout out to God is dope. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the other thing that happened is up so with, with Otis and uh, Rosalind, they were out campaigning, but it seems like Rosalind was really kind of going off script and um, railroad and Otis for real. He couldn't even but get a she word was, in. She was saving his butt though. I agree. He, he, I agree. She was saving his butt because it, potholes are cool, but she was trying to give him more a, more of a platform. Yeah. Right. And and when he when he screwed her like that, that's why a woman's scorn. That's why you can't be treating women any type of way, especially oh. Lawanda said it offline. When they know where the bar the bodies are buried, you can't be talking trash. And you know you can't be carrying them to the left. You can't. Yep. And, and what happens next? Jake trying to break into the safe, and she was like, "Here's a code." <laughs> I, I told I told y'all I see this coming. Jake and Trig, something is going down. Dude, I ain't making it to the uh, mayoral house or whatever. Look, I heard it. I've heard it in my youth. I hear it in my head every day, and I play it back every day. Hell have no fury like a woman's going. <laughs> <laughs> right. Disrespect. I was like, okay. I'm like, okay, just keep on. You just digging your own grave. Why? Why would you do that? And why would he go, I mean, outside and tell her to go home? Because yeah. he couldn't get a word in edgewise. Maybe he should have taken that moment to see he didn't need to say anything. Cause he she, still got the mama issues. Yeah, well. Mama did a job on him. Mm -hmm. And that's why he treats, you know, uh, Ro Rosalind and anybody else the way he does. Yeah, because Rosalind is the best thing that could have happened to him in this right. race. So, you know, control. what were you about to say? I think it's control. He wants to be in control. No, it's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you heard you heard him tell her, like, are you running? Is right. it you that's running or me? And, and, <laughs> like, well, yeah. to be honest, yes, both of you are, because she's got to put in work just like you do. And she's trying to help you. So in theory, she's probably putting in more work than you because she's got to do the background work, the footwork. She's got to do everything that you just sit back and take credit for. Yeah. And so those documents that Jake took um, out of the safe and, and ended up taking to Camille's office, what do you think those documents were? Because old boy seemed overjoyed to receive them. <laughs> he was like, well, how much we owe you? I can well, I really believe that Duda was behind. Remember when they were trying to force uh, Miss Ethel out of the house and they beat her up and all that That's stuff? That's my season. Yeah, he's probably, it probably has a lot to do with that and a whole lot of other stuff. Yeah, probably the payments to the pastors and, you yeah, know, other I'm things. Sure, people I'm sure there's a lot of kickback on that, on those sheets and, and mm -hmm. other things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but... My thing is, why would you keep that in a safe? That should have been shredded somewhere. So, you know, let's but talk it's about- It's gotta talk. be blackmail. It's gotta be records that he could use as leverage over people. Over yeah, mm -hmm. it has mm -hmm. to be something that like, he can use. But here's the one interesting part about it, and I wanted to bring this up before we go. The planning of drugs in Trick's car. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you plant drugs in the truck. The truck goes off. You gotta know it has an alarm on it. The, the, the alarm goes off. What do you expect Trig to do? You think the police? You think the police are going to get there sooner than he can come out of his his home with his, his uh, piece? I, I I just didn't. I somebody help me understand that piece right there, because and then you're going to leave the car door sitting wide open so he can see all, you know he can see right away what's in the car. I, I'm I I I got lost right there. It was an amateur move, I think. Sure. Um, they yeah. probably didn't think, you know, like, okay, maybe I could just plant these drugs real quick and we can get them caught up that way. But that was very amateur thinking. You know, that, that nice Mercedes truck, you know, that thing be locked down. Oh, oh tight, you know. <laughs> yeah, so you know you're not getting in there easy. Exactly. So yeah. that it was just a stupid thing all the way around. But I think um, the underlying issue is that the, it's the retaliation um, from what he's what Trick has been doing in the neighborhood. 
We already know he's on a lot of people's bad side. Yeah. Season finale is going down. Yeah. It's going down with Treg, Duda, Jake. Somebody gonna get it's hurt. It's going down. Yeah. Somebody yeah. gonna get hurt. I was telling Tef that I hope that Camille actually gets the folder because I would have put that kind of information in her hand. So we hope that her office, her her staff is on the up and up and that Duda doesn't have plants working in her office. Wow. Because you that, think that, about everything. I'm starting to think about every um, every possible avenue or way this could end up. You know what? True. I think that's a good um, scenario to be played out in uh, episode 10. That she, mm -hmm. Mill doesn't get that information. That that young dude goes now. The dude, you know, and the reason I can say that because he looks so, so straight, so clean. But we all know there's a other, there's a you know another side to that. So money talks. Money mm -hmm. talks, and exactly. so you know, that's I, why I'm like, no, this goes in her hands. Yeah, in her hands only. exactly. In fact, that's what they should have said. You know, I got some information that's going to help her. I need to speak directly to her. This has to go directly to her. You leave it in the hands of somebody else, and you don't know what's going to happen. Right. So we'll see how that plays out. That's yeah. gonna you guys have any other predictions for the season finale? I still think that Jake is going to be the one that, like, kills Duda or whatever. Like, maybe he'll intervene. Maybe Duda and Trig are going to get into a war or whatever. And I, I feel like Jake is going to be involved heavily mm -hmm. in this. You think yeah. Rosalind gonna pay for giving uh, Jake the uh, the code to the safe? You think that's gonna come out? And I can see Rosalind getting upset. Well, Lawanda said offline she thought that um, he's gonna think that she did it because he's not gonna think that Jake had the code. I mean, she is the only right. one that had the combination. Right, and I'm thinking that there's gonna be a, you know, once that information is divulged, I think he'll, he'll know that she had to have had something to do with it. Question yeah. is, Will she just, you know, will she take the bullet or will she, will she say, well, you know, That's, Jake came back. I don't put nothing past him. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it would seem unlikely to me that Otis is the kind of person that wouldn't have security cameras in his home. So I'm like, if he can review some footage or something, he's going to catch it some kind of way. He's going to figure out what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we expect it's going to be a showdown. Something's going to happen between them. So. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. absolutely. Go. Showdown is going because Duda is going to have uh, Duda is going to have to uh, save uh, Jake. I mean, um, uh, Duda and and um, and Jake's brother, Trig. Trig. I think that's where the uh, final analysis is going to be. Mm -hmm. gonna be showdown between the two of them, but they yeah. all got something to settle, anyways. So I think this sets up for a nice showdown. Yeah, yep. I agree. I agree too. Well, and Emmett and, Emmett and Tiff are going to be on the outs next season. I mean, next oh, episode. It's definitely going down over there. Uh -huh. I haven't forgotten that Corey Hartwick was on the show, what, about two or three episodes? He mm -hmm. was a client. So I'm yep. sure they didn't just have him make that appearance as some kind of cameo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so maybe that's who she goes to. Maybe that's her rebound. Gosh. Okay, we huh. got to be mad got, at it. Now, yeah, I wouldn't be mad at that either. <laughs> we, got less than, we got less than a minute. Yeah, yeah, because that'll set Emmett up. There's going to be tension. If she ends up with him, he seems like he might be kind of an edgy guy, and Emmett is not going to want his child around that guy. So that could be potential for next season. So we'll see what happens with that. Oh, good, call. That's good prediction. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us as uh, we recap this episode. Please go down in the comments and let us know how you felt about this episode. Uh, what did you think about Ronnie's tragic passing? Um, let us know. Um, also, be sure to click subscribe and the notification bell so that you get alerted every single time we post. And we are also on social media at The Spot Real Talk on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So give us a follow there and we will follow you back. Excellent. Um, any closing remarks before we head out? Good. Rest in peace, Ronnie. Good too. Rest in peace. Indeed. Rock me, Miss Evans. All okay. right. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Have a good night, and we'll see you next week. All right. Bye. 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 Was the time that I liked you, despite you being a jerk, and I knew it. Been here before, and I knew it. But you were so damn cute. You having a girl in your life, I knew it. Been here before. He was saying, Yeah, we live together, but we're not together.
Whatever, whatever, he would say, yeah, we live together, but we're not together. 